Hey Lab Code Agents, it's Tristan and we've got a whole bunch of amazing people with us today. Uh, this one's being co-hosted with James Wong and Jesse Zagorski, who you all know. And the reason I'm wearing a beanie and a sweater is because it's 50 and I'm cold. And that's a good reason. Even though Michael, Mike, you know, Mike Bernier. Dude, is it like negative 20 where you're at right now? Oh, it's not quite that bad, but I'm looking at a snowstorm right now at my window, so... Uh, and you're the one that looks cold. I don't get it. <laughs> well, uh, thanks. Thanks all of you for joining. James, Jesse, I'm going to let you introduce everybody on here. Uh, hey, guys, James, I think you start, let's man. Master James, this is yeah, all you. Yeah, guys, I'm so excited. We are doing this new thing around putting together masterminds for all of us. Uh, we got a, a lot of amazing brokers. And today we're going to talk about what it, what it looks like for you guys to build your brand in the community for your agents, becoming more attractive inside of your community of agents and also building the brand for the buyers and sellers and other things like what are we doing uh, to, to help your agents succeed inside of their marketing? What tools are we using? Um, what are ways that we streamline all the things that have to do with marketing inside of your brokerage? And we've got some amazing, really killer brokers joining us today. So far we have, I want to kick it off with someone that we may not have met before. His name is Vin Sochi. Uh, Vin, will you please introduce yourself, where you're from, how many agents you manage, um, and all that fun stuff. Sure. Hey, thanks, James. Uh, my name is Vin Sochi, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at William Pitt and Julia B. Fee, Sotheby's International Realty, out here in very cold uh, Connecticut, Westchester, New York, and the Berkshires of Mass. Uh, we have about 1,100 agents spread across uh, 27 offices. Wow. And Vin, you've been with William Pitt Sotheby's for a long time. How long have you been with them? 10 years. 10 years and you didn't start as the COO, right? No, I didn't. I was in, uh, I was actually the VP of marketing and then uh, went into the COO role. Yeah, that, that seems to happen. A lot. I noticed a lot of big or bigger organizations, the VP of marketing becomes the COO because marketing is such a big deal. And you guys have been doing some of the most innovative stuff I've ever seen. I, I, I say that from the bottom of my heart. I've worked with again, 600 brands now. And what you guys are doing for your brokerage is amazing. I can't wait to tap your brain and, for you to share what everyone else is, what you're doing to everyone else. No, thanks a lot, James. And a lot of that's uh, in, in thanks to you. And so then you have Susan, Susan Fixon. She's up in Tahoe right now. Please introduce yourself where you're, uh, you know, it's, it's really neat when I didn't know who you were until I went to your website and when we, before we started working together. And I was like, oh my God, she's like a game changer over there. Does, um, does, does, she, does she need intro music, James? Because I was trying to get it fast enough for Vin and I didn't. I think people need intro music. You ready, Susan? Are you not entertained? Hold on. Where'd it go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So you guys, if I echo, let me know. Uh, Wi-Fi, and I'm in South Lake Tahoe right now, and Wi-Fi has one channel that goes out on their network so the more people up here it scatters so let me know if i if you miss something um susan fixon pacific oak real estate uh broker been involved 14 years grew our company with um over a 300 percent increase in the last three years um i contribute a lot of that and i'm going to put the plug out there to maxa we <laughs> um put out our marketing our templates and who we are for branding and perception and we're at a very high level for both counties that i work in what are the counties that you work in santa clara county which is silicon valley and also san benito county all the way to monterey county so, so just just to set the context we're talking about marketing today but you just made a phrase that i see debated online a lot you said the branding actually matters <laughs> interesting you, but actually, what we do, right? perception i love it it's, it's who you are, who you present, and who you want to be. And I believe that this is why this video is so important for everybody on, on this lab coat, because you can be the exceptional agent, but if people don't know who you are and your direction of what, where you want to go and who you want to be, then they're not going to be along for the ride. And I believe strongly in that marketing aspect. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, you do a really great job with laying out a lot of your awards too, and how you guys, how, how you again, how you built your perception, validated yourself. Um, you know, when I talk about branding, I always talk about 
three main attributes of a brand, your functional, your social, and your emotional attributes. And socially, you've done such a great job of, from word of mouth and also through others to others, what others are saying about you and your, guy, your business. I'm excited to see if there's what unique things you're doing to continue to build that validation and that track record. Great, thank you. Then we've got Mr. David Kurz. Uh, <laughs> David and I. <laughs> <laughs> David's coming out of Miami. Tell us about you. Um, so I'm out of Miami, Florida. I've been in the business 15 years. Um, I love real estate, man. I, I, I spent nine years in the Marine Corps before all this, and I'm very grateful to have this opportunity. So uh, about three, three plus years ago, I decided to open up my own brokerage after being at places like Keller Williams and Douglas Elliman, and where I spent the majority of my career at. And about three years ago, we opened up our own brokerage. And uh, we grew to three offices, 197 agents over three years. And, and we did really great uh, most recently, and I think it's been everywhere. Uh, we actually merged the entire brokerage into eXp. So I've taken a different role, uh, but it doesn't change uh, what, what I'm very passionate about, which is coaching, teaching, branding, marketing, all that great stuff that, that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, because I took on kind of like a leadership role and, and I'm building an, a, a whole network of people and we're up to about 160 right now and we're pushing to be up 500 by the end of the year so um and i guess the idea now is that i'm going to be more in in a, a team leader position i'm building my team back up so we have a team here in miami uh, we're eight strong here and we just launched an expansion team thanks to tristan for giving me some advice but we just launched an expansion team in northern virginia um, which is going to tap into D.C. I was in Virginia all last week, brought three, three people onto the team and one pending. And one of those folks is licensed in Maryland and D.C., so we'll be able to tap into those. But that's me in a nutshell. Written a couple uh, books. Have you, a lot still of run, you still have a, a few hundred agents that you're managing. I do. Like, yeah, like, a couple like hundred. Like two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I still do it. You know, I coach and everything else. And we use Maxo at a high level. Like, you know, we could have made a decision to kill Maxo when we, uh, when we transitioned because, you know, whatever. And we decided not to. It's literally the only program we kept in the transition. Everything else we didn't need. So, and in the transition, we offer it to everyone that joins us. Like, you're coming in with us, then you're a part of this family, then you get access to this beautiful platform. And we spent, like you and I spent so much time on that design and everything that we have in there. So it still has a very great cursed feel to it. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. All right, now we've got Mr. Michael Bonier. Mike, I get to talk to you every week. How are you doing? Where are you Mike, my hero. Where are you in Long Island? Right here. Oh. Hey, thanks, uh, yeah, hey, what's up, everybody? So. My name is Mike Bernier. I'm one of two partners of a independent, large independent brokerage in Minnesota. And like I said, it's a snowstorm out here today. It's, it's a little brutal. Uh, we've got 465 agents as of today. We've been growing our brokerage for about five years. One thing that's unique about us is we're a flat fee model. So we kind of get lumped into that whole flat fee, um, you know, stereotype. So in order to help combat that, we, you know, we've uh, um, attracted a lot of high producing agents. So our, our agents produce about what you'd see in a Keller Williams or you know any other large franchise model. Um, but to always kind of fight that 100% flat fee stigma, you know, we have to really hyper-focus on the way we present ourselves. So that's what we've been really successful at doing with Maxa is getting that perception that, I mean, visibility is credibility, right? So you have to make sure that your, your branding is telling the story. Um, so we jumped in with you guys maybe, what was it, a year, year and a half ago, James, now? Yeah. Um, you know, but, you know, one thing about it, I'll say, uh, and I'm curious to see how Vin's doing it, is having the branding and having the marketing available, but getting them to adopt it and use it might be something different. So we're, what we've done is we've kind of taken a lot of that on ourselves to do for them. So I think that's going to be a theme that I'm hoping to hear what we're doing to ensure our agents are utilizing the marketing and branding the way we'd like. Uh, but anyway, in a nutshell, that's me. That's awesome. And, you know, crazy how much you guys have grown. And I know you guys are club wealth coaches as well, or I'm not sure anymore. Yep. You guys, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it, you guys have taken such a pride in coaching other broker, um, brokers. And you guys have such a fire behind your marketing. I hear when, you, when we, we talk, I hear the subtleties, what you guys talk, uh, what you guys know about marketing for your mm -hmm. brokerage. 
Um, really excited. Um, so we got Rob D'Amico. I'm not sure if your sound's on, brother. I'm uh, on. All right. So Rob is um, one of the partners at C21 New England or New Northeast. Sorry. Northeast. Northeast. Northeast in Boston. Tell us about you, how many agents you're running. We're excited because you guys have been in the game for a very long time and built a really big business when others could have, you know, failed in the last 15, 20 years. Sure. Yeah, so we start, I started the business 21 years ago. Um, we have 45 office locations throughout Mass, Maine, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island with over 850 agents now. Um, you know, so we've been doing this uh, company. We're actually hitting our 25th anniversary this year. Um, so we got hooked up with James and Maxa probably, I don't know, three months ago. And, um, you know, one of the struggles I think we've always had as a big brokerage is, um, you know, with the commission rates where they're at, the profitability is, you know, has come way down. So you have to find ways to bring value to your agents, you know, support wise. And one of the struggles is bringing in marketing people, but it's what a lot of competitors are using in those small one or two office shops where they kind of run it from either a mega hub. So they have, they have more of that solidarity where, we have to spread out our resources a lot. And with Maxa, it gave us the ability to basically add a marketing director to every single agent in our whole company. And we've been live for probably just about, I think it's a week today, um, yeah. we've been live. And I mean, just in the week, we kind of just did some teaser videos and gave it out as a Christmas gift. So it's been the holiday, so obviously agents aren't in. So we're starting launch and heavy duty training right after the first of the year where we'll be training on the software, but also tying it in with other areas of the business, like social media, how an agent can go out and market themselves and kind of just dive into that. But then different types of marketing with expireds for sale by owners, and it's all gonna center around Maxa. So these agents are using the marketing piece and nobody has a software like this. And I think to me, you know, the software that we have, we actually have the best marketing person in the business. and. All we have is the system, which is great. It, the, the technology and the marketing pieces in there, the simplicity of it is amazing. And just in the week, we've been teasing out videos and stuff. The feedback, I've never, I, I haven't had feedback like this on a product and I couldn't tell you how long. Uh, so, I mean, the last week has been awesome and it's only been a week, but everybody's loving it. And the feedback has helped us tremendously just with the rolling that out. Especially when you, when you say feedback, Rob, you mean like agents in your brokerage are yeah, trying yeah, it and right. loving it. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest things that people say the toughest part for agents is marketing, you know, good marketing. And I think one of the biggest reasons I'm a guy that's been doing marketing, I was doing it back when it was print advertising. So I've rode the wave of different marketing, but now it's all about the social media and the content you can provide. But you know, the, the images and the, the, the content they're using is garbage. You know, it just doesn't look appealing. They're creating it on, you know, Microsoft Paint, basically, you know, and they have these just sold listings. And, you know, you see them basically taking their finger and writing just sold, you know, and it looks <laughs> horrible. So, you know, you, you know, I, I actually think that that might be useful at this day and age to go the opposite way. Let's just go back to drawing <laughs> on pictures and paint. I like that idea. Right. It was nice and easy. You know, I mean, it, nobody had to have anything. But now it's all about even things like the property brochures, those four page brochures are becoming bigger and bigger in our market. So before it was something you would see on like a high end listing, you know, something you're getting, you know, a good commission on. You wouldn't see it on a two hundred thousand dollar condo. But now agents from other companies who have these marketing people in house that we can't compete. I can't have a marketing person in forty five locations. It just doesn't work. Mm. So to give them something like this. I, I, I'll piggyback on Rob. It's 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 the quality that you get out of it. It's the quality of the marketing piece that you get out of it. And it requires very little thinking about design or anything else. Like we're, you know, at some point we're expecting all our agents to be, you know, graphic designers as well. And so these guys were using like, he says paint. I, I always compared it to like using three different apps that do three different things, right? Like one overlays on the other one, the other one puts text, the other one adds a photo, your logo, you know? And then by the time it gets out, it just looks like a, like, like a pizza that was in the back of a motorcycle that did 120, <laughs> you know? And then is that a good or a bad pizza? I'm just yeah, that's a bad pizza. So, 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 so James, can, can we do this to frame up the context? We, everyone's been intro now, right? Yep. All right, good. So for people watching this, we're kind of diving into some of the Maxa stuff. Like, is the goal for the call today, are we talking high level, 
marketing mastermind concepts? Are we diving into Maxa a little bit of both? Like, let's frame up the context. Some people are watching who have no idea what Maxa is probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, Maxa is a tool to really empower the brokerages, leadership in a company to distribute all of their marketing and keep agents from going rogue, having a strong brand guidelines over everything. But what I wanted today to be about is we got some badasses on the call today. Like, uh, you know, you guys don't know, but Rob D'Amico's company, uh, they're the official real estate company of the Boston Bruins. And like, for me, I don't even know what that means. I want to know, like, what was the thinking process behind that? I, I, like, think, James, I, I, the I think the Bruins are a hockey team, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're from Cal we're in the West Coast. We, we know what a hockey is. Anyway, yeah. yeah I'm in Miami, dude. I would, I'm in Miami. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have ice. Stop <laughs> rubbing it in. I I'm late for the call because we got, you know, two inches of ice here last night. The roads are <laughs> undrivable. So stop rubbing in all these Miamis and Californians. <laughs> we like hockey here. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. So, it is, so, so tell us, like, what, what, what was the thinking behind that? Because, again, at a high level, marketing for your brokerage is about building an awareness in your community and, and showing uh, – sh showing level of values that you guys have in, in order to connect with more people but what was your guys when did you guys do it why did you guys do it let's start there and then i want to hear some things about, from susan um, oh. i'm going to jump in because this is my really deep question of who i am um, i live in a small community which is called hollister in san benito county in addition i work in silicon valley which is san jose you're looking all santa clara um, when you're not born and bred in a region um, you're not considered part of a community for quite a long time. So when you open up a small business, you have to create a brand or an awareness where people notice you because I'm not an in, Intero, in Berkshire Hathaway, or Remax, um, Cobble Banker. And to do that, I had to create a positive uh, branding model that reflected our professionalism, ethics, and our culture of who we are. And when Maxa was, um, I'm a full year with you and Maxa, when we were able to join with your company, it allowed each of my agents to project their individuality using the platform, but it also kept what our mission, our professionalism, ethics, and values, and what we wanted to promote on every template. But then they can get creative. Was that on the platform? Yeah. And that's how an indie brokerage did it, because we're only, we're only 12 at this point. I think that's Go I'd ahead. like to add to that if I could. Um, first off, you also have to think about it in terms of as you're growing a brokerage, especially if, you're, if your goal is to grow a larger brokerage, one of the first things you have to accomplish is attracting agents to that brokerage. And one of the biggest fears that an agent has when they leave their current brokerage is, is my business going to change? Is it going to slow down? Am I going to run into a pain point? Mm -hmm. So having marketing that's going to help, in, it help kind of instill that confidence in them that they got a platform they can tap into and not have to recreate the wheel and have something probably better than they had before. That's been recruiting gold. And sometimes it's as easy as showing them one piece of print material, or if you really want to show them the entire marketing suite, man, I can, can't tell you how many people went, Oh, wait a second. I had no idea you guys have this over here. So, you know, you have to look at, you know, your, your audiences. You're not talking just about buyers and sellers here. You certainly can be, See, David, you know what I'm talking about. You, yeah, I have it right by audience. my desk for the very same reason. Right, right. You know, your first audience really is as a broker is your agents, the people you're trying to attract. So yeah. I do a lot of recruiting. I'm just going to jump in there real quick. So I do a lot of recruiting, and James hooked us up with a um, template site from one of the other Century 21s that I've actually been using on my recruiting since we started talking and agreed probably about two months ago. <laughs> and I can tell you that I've actually gotten recruits and I have people that in my pipeline because of this system, because you have this one-stop shop for marketing. And mm -hmm. it's actually, I've just did Friday. I did about a hundred call. Uh, I'm all thrown off with the days. Yeah. Friday uh, with the holiday, but I called just to wish everybody a happy new year and re-engaged a lot of my recruits and said, listen, you got to sit with me and check out this new marketing system. And the people I've sat with, I've actually started to get testimonials because it's actually that good. I mean, it's really worked on the recruiting because nobody has anything like this and they're all trying to create it. And when you have someone in the office, you're sharing that person with everybody. This gives them on-demand marketing for whatever, not just a flyer, but every part of their business. So huge. So do we, uh, do we want to talk about some of the things we're doing with the marketing? Are we ready for that part of the conversation now? 
because <laughs> I know as, as we've grown, um, you know, getting people to know what you offer as a broker, when you start getting into the 300, 400, 500 agents, it's hard to keep all their attention on all the different things that you have because they're, you know, they're getting pulled in different directions. Um, so one thing we started doing to make sure that the marketing is being implemented is we've got a program we call the hands-free marketing. When they list a property, there's seven things we do that we send them in a link already done for them on that property so they can just deploy it, which has been absolutely a recruiting goal. Like they're, they're going, this is hours worth of work I'd have to do to create this myself. And I won't even know what to do with it. But now you're just giving me a link and it's got, you know, a just listed postcard. It's got a print flyer. It's got a social media graphic, seven different things we do that they just get to deploy. And we have one virtual assistant handling that um, for, we list somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 200 to 300 properties a month. So, you know, streamlining that system to getting your marketing in play has been at, just crucial for us because there's people that haven't even logged into the marketing design studio, as we call it. You know, we've looked and like, you haven't been in here in a year. You've listed properties in a year. You've done marketing year, but you're not getting in here. And they're like, well, I haven't figured out how to use it yet. So we've literally taken it off their hands and just given them the deployment uh, of it. So that's been huge for us. I noticed a lot of concierge services, the difference between you know, providing tools and empowering them through training or like doing more concierge level. Mm -hmm. You know, Vin from William Pitt, he does a really cool thing. They have this advertising platform that they use that we actually custom built through Maxa for, for them. But tell us a little bit about that. That's something that I've never seen another brokerage uh, do. What do you, sure, uh, for, you're talking like our cooperative advertising. We do. Yeah, what is that? Tell us like maybe Mike could use it or, or uh, Rob could use it. We still do a ton of print advertising, especially when you get towards the high end. And we've had an archaic system, all paper-based as far as the ordering of it. So James, you stepped up and you were able to deliver us like a fully catalog um, digital platform to order the, the actual reservations and then get the pieces all done. It, it's, it's pretty, we're just about to launch it, but it's pretty sick. And talking about the system overall, I can't like, I give you higher kudos listening to everybody the scale piece our agents were just reinventing the wheel in the last 12 months this has been the most adopted product i think in my 10 years at william pitt to ever have a solution out there like with maxa that's awesome and i think the beautiful thing about that like speaking to the agents the agents that are at brokerages that are using maxa you know if, if you're using if you're at a brokerage that's using max at a very high level then you are basically doing a lot of co-branding. You don't have to think about it. Your brand is going to stick with that brand, that brand that all of us are putting a ton of money into, putting out there for the world to see. And when you create a piece, you fall within that and it stays within brand and it keeps you at a very high level and it keeps you clean, sophisticated, looks good. You yeah. know, your clients are happy with it. You create four page brochures, eight page, you create, you know, flyers to pass around the neighborhood, whatever it is, it looks good and it stays within brand. You didn't make a postcard that looks like this and then uh, 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 a four page brochure that looks like this, if you even make four page brochures, right? This is such a pain in the butt to design, but now they're not. Now it's plug and play. Now it's add photo, put content, send to print. It's insane. It's amazing. You know, I think I'm going to go back to what I was stating from the beginning. Um, for an indie brokerage, the most important thing was brand recognition. And you want that brand recognition every single time they recognize. You don't want to change that. You want that same thing. But what Maxa has provided at this level is then the creativity of my agents can come in and create their personality with their templates using Maxa. Um, but I also want to bring in the support system that's offered um, if there's a question or can I do something, there is the ability to email or text on the support up in the upper right, which has saved me personally as a broker a ton of time. So, um, again, the most important thing on Maxa for me is the brand recognition. It is the consistency of the template so that over time people recognize, hey, I recognize her brand. I recognize her logo. Oh, this is a cool look. Look at this. It's different. All right. And that's what's taken us to the next level. You guys are so sweet. I don't want to talk about Max <laughs> I, I think, I want, let's, let, let's go into um, uh, it's marketing. Let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about marketing. marketing branding. So quick question for Susan. You, 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 know, you have a 12 person team in Silicon Valley and, and sent and the neighboring uh, neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, what, are you, what are you doing to build the brand recognition when you're competing with the Interos and the Berkshires and the, you know, 
the climbs in the world, all those guys over there. Well, um, what are you doing other than Max? That you do just, is, is it all based on volume and production or what else are you doing? Uh, great question. So first of all, we don't compete at all against the other uh, agencies. We, what we do is we create individual uh, independent agents within so that each of the individual agents have a niche. And so when I do recruiting and using the brand, they each niche in a special way. We have like the president, um, amazing Jesse Mansmith, who's president of NHRA. Oh, did I say that right? For the Real Estate yeah, Association. So what I do is I create these areas with my agents and then they focus on marketing, branding in that area. Um, we are small for that reason. I haven't had the desire yet to go big, probably because of the ignorance of the process. Um, the second thing I think I would probably say for that is I do also use a virtual assistant um, who is absolutely top line. I went through four assistants to find the one I needed and that person is attuned to what our needs are in your program, but also our personality and our culture. So when we move into a different area and want to open another office, we carry that brand and that personality to that office. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we adapt to the locality of where we are. I'm in a country setting. I'm in a Silicon Valley high tech setting. So each one of our branding is actually separated and different in those areas. Wow. And great. And, and this is a question for Vin and Rob. You guys have bigger, on the other side of the, of the spectrum, how do you guys manage, you know, influencing your agents to stay on brand? Cause you know, with Susan, she can just, it's like, she can totally just talk to them and say, dude, you gotta use, you gotta stay to our core values. But for you guys with a thousand or eight, 900 agents, how do you guys manage that? Um, where they're, they're proud to use your guys' uh, brand and, and, and rep you guys. I'll take it before Max, uh, we struggled a whole lot to do that though, because you want to maintain the consistency that Susan's talking about, but when you start scaling up to 1,127 offices, it, it gets to be a challenge. And so we do have marketing coordinators based in each of our brokerages, but they come with their own backgrounds, whether it be graphic design or some other skill sets, and they bring their own you know, flavor into the brand. We have a strong brand with Sotheby's, but then you have an agent who wants, like Susan was mentioning with the niches, they're able to bring that, that personal brand to the table plus they didn't have to reinvent the wheel once we had max in and this whole past year i we've got social media posts going out we've got list of presentations we've got postcards brochures every thing conceivable um that's consistent we know from our corporate level it's consistent down to the brokerages and it's just like a whole inspiration tank for us because we just throw things it's like a think tank where we're throwing ideas in there and we're getting it collaboratively from all the different offices mm -hmm. I think, I'm gonna jump in. yeah, James, I want to jump in. I have a brilliant agent that is a high producer, top producer, and she also has her own brand within our brand. And you're really looking at compliance. So you have to be very careful on the compliance that you're, which allows us to follow that consistency that we always meet the DRE um, regulations, but it also allows her to promote her Facebook page also with her logo. And that has been a creation um, that has also been, we've been able to utilize for her area where she promotes herself. So I think that consistency, but also it allows that independent agent to form another group under, or a team under my team or a sub team. And I think that's also with that consistency that is provided with all your templates and branding. Um, because I'm that's, that's big, it's happening a lot more. You get a lot of the top producers, the self-sufficient agents and teams who want to have their own personal brand within their community, their niche, but still have the, the, the bigger brokerage or the, you know, have you Susan to lead them um, and be under the Pacific Oaks brand. And we, I think we see that a lot. You know, I, I started my career in real estate marketing, which is my only career. And back in 2000, uh, back just in LA and, you know, what we found was like the more brands, the more teams we branded, the more um, it became a, like a must. Like we credit, started to create this demand of agents didn't want to work with just uh, a sign. They wanted to feel, know, and, and love the, the, that team or that couple that they're working with or that person. And it's, it's huge now in LA that we've seen. Everyone has their own sign out on Sundays and 
it's it's really neat. Rob, what what were you gonna say? Yeah, so I think for us it's been a um, you know I've been doing this now 25 years, so we've gone through the phases of marketing, and you know as we've gotten bigger, the struggle. You gotta uh, tell us the phases now. Now I'm not. Uh, all right, so three, four, five phases. You know, so I think the you know when when I started, it was all about print mag marketing, the the local magazines, you know the the phone books, you know, and that was a lot of the business generation. So you controlled a lot of the marketing because your agents came to you with those ads. You had to place the ads. Um, agents really weren't doing a lot of their own stuff. Then it was, a, you know, the industry was set up different with how you compensated the agent. So as times move on into the digital age, I think the control of it, especially with the size we've grown, like Vin said, you know, it's, it, there comes a point where you just can't control the agents and what they're doing and control the marketing that's going out and, I always go back to the, you know, the little sold written across the thing in paint, you know, and that's what you're seeing now. But by having something like this, we actually changed our name um, from, we were Century 21 North Shore, which only covered a small region, but we really couldn't grow under that name. So we started creating a lot of different um, brand names under Century 21. So we had NS Group, NS Premier. So you'd grow through all these territories and you didn't have that market domination that you truly had you know, you couldn't visualize it because you had different names and the consumer doesn't know it. So that's why, you know, you asked before about the Bruins and that was a big reason we're doing our uh, sponsorship with the Boston Bruins now is because it's really allowed us to, you know, capture a big audience and get that name out there with um, a lot of the different programs we do in arena marketing. Um, we run a contest once a month where we uh, basically give a local hero a bunch of stuff, including a ride on the Zamboni at the Bruins game. That's so cool. getting involved, yeah. And then we got into the SEO side. But controlling that marketing that goes out with the brochures, there's no, there's, there was no unity in it. And, you know, by having that social media, we're excited to have that. And I think a big part of us really making this a success is to continue to push the agents and, and get out there with trainings and integrate it into what they do. As opposed to just throwing it out there and saying, hey, look at this great thing see you guys in a year. It's got to be consistency every single week to push it with, you know, we're going to be doing, you know, we have two graphic designers in house. So we're actually going to be designing pieces every week to upload and let them know, here's the new releases for the week. So we're really, I think engagement is a big part of making this a success and we're already fully engaged and need to do a good job continuing that. But the consistency that this is going to allow us to brand. It's something we haven't been able to do in quite some time because you can't control the pieces. So, uh, no, I, want to, I want to jump in there. I think it's important that when you're thinking about marketing, especially, I think James, you brought it up, you know, for the larger brokerages, it's harder to keep the attention of all your agents and all the different things you're doing. Right. So we always think about marketing, but we often fail to market to our own agents once we have them. So we look at it like we're almost a media and marketing company for our own company. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to tell your agents, hey, I've got this great platform with this great system, and you tell them one time and you demo it one time, they'll forget about it by the next day. Like you got to stay in front of them constantly with the stuff you offer for, or they're just going to go elsewhere. Look at, their, look at their email one time. How many different marketing companies or shiny objects or squirrels are they getting advertised to them every single day about this, this, or that that's going to take their business to the next level? So it's like, you know, they're getting pulled, their attention is getting pulled all the time. So I think it's really important if you're going to, you know, leverage a system like Max, so to make sure that your agents constantly see it being used and constantly see that, you know, that you're pushing it to them um, and even showing them how to use it. Sometimes it's literally like, I forgot my login, so I just went somewhere else. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to stay in front of them with how to get in there, how to use it. And then, of course, the results, not just the feature, but the benefit. Having your agents talk about, you know, this great thing that happened with your marketing. I just want a listing because of the listing presentation, you know, highlight the successes with it. And then you get higher adoption. I think. Yeah. I think one of the things I don't do it as big as Mike does with, you know, the seven pieces, but definitely something we do is every major event or special holiday. You know, I've got all, I've got all my agents on a text campaign, right? So, you know, I, I create a nice piece or my marketing guy creates a nice piece. It stays in the system. It's in there. We send it to everybody. We go, Hey guys, this is the Merry Christmas tile that you can use for social media. By the way, this can be found inside the Kurzari marketing platform. So, and then they just go to, you know, we, we put the website on there, kurzarimarketing.com. They go in there and they're like, oh, that's right. We've got Maxa, you know, and they go in there and then that triggers them to start tapping. Well, I got a listing. Let me do this real quick, you know, or, or I should do a brochure for that. 
you know, one house I'm trying to sell and they go do that real quick. And so it triggers them to come back into the website. Now the lazy ones are the lazy ones. If you don't want to market, you're just going to grab what I sent you and you're going to post it. That's good enough. But believe it or not, that's great for them and it's great for us because we all stay within the same brand. So now I've got a couple hundred people sending out the same exact yeah. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. You know, it's the same exact one over a couple hundred times all through social media. And, and the, also the sphere of influence. Everybody has their own sphere of influence. So when that goes out there, um, it could be the same message with their own personal touch or something, but you're putting it out to people that aren't, well, for us, um, just in different uh, areas that they might have come from, whether they're from a different state, and it's heading out. Again, the same consistent branding that they're seeing over and over with the signage. So, so the, the word I'm hearing from all you guys, by the way, because I want to give actionable takeaways from someone at home watching this, is consistency. Right? That's literally the word you've all just said. If we look back and look at the transcript, you've all said in different ways, consistency. So, and then Mike Bernier pointed out something, which is the reason why human beings don't do things is often because they don't know how. So I'd love to ask a quick rapid fire question that'll kind of, because some people are watching this, everyone on this video that all these little boxes I'm looking at, everyone here is either a self-proclaimed or James has called them a marketing expert. You're all marketing nerds. You're all um, just obsessed with marketing the same way I am. And I love that about you guys. So in your life, in your career as marketers, what's the, I want to go rapid fire through a couple of people. What's the biggest marketing mistake you've made and what's the lesson you learned from it? Uh, Whose biggest marketing mistake probably was not finding Maxis soon enough. I wasn't even cheating about that, dude. Oh, you run oh, such a really? badass operation. Just say something else. But, 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 okay, but Vin, let's dive into that. Vin, with the marketing. Yeah, and not taking. Go ahead. But let's just say so. So. You said not finding Maxa soon enough. And so for some people who don't have Maxa, don't have the platform, whatever it is, what was it about this platform? What was the mistake that was happening before it that like, what was going on that was missing? It, Maxa, it, it's an end to end solution for marketing, all your marketing and it's digital, it's print, it's social, whatever that is. And we were missing that. It was that, that void that we had because we were, we're all of our offices, all of our agents were producing fantastic content, but there was no consistency and there wasn't the ability, I call it the halo effect, but uh, David was talking about seeing that social media post go out about Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever. And you see it now, agents can apply their own logo and it's just everywhere you're scrolling on instant Facebook and it's a consistent message versus everyone having to reinvent that wheel. So, so, that, so that was the biggest mistake was you have this huge brokerage of 1100 agents and there was no consistency. Exactly. Even, well, and so you basically, the, the missing point, if I'm summarizing, was you gave them a tool to allow them to easily create consistency. Yep. Love it. Spot on. Susan? I think um, I really want to talk about my mistakes because I came in as an individual. Um, as I did it, I took a certain percentage from every listing or close of escrow and applied that percentage to a marketing budget. But the problem was, is my marketing budget was scattered. I would try farming for a couple times in one area, or I will try to do an ad or a Facebook ad or something, but I wasn't across the board where people were expecting to see it over and over. And my biggest loss of money probably was I kept trying different avenues of marketing, but I wasn't following a pattern of marketing. What I've been able to do at this point is work with my agents and determine what their pattern should look like their marketing budget and where do they want to see themselves promoted. And this, this allows us to do that. But in addition, um, it allows creativity um, very quickly. I think you could ask every single person, what is the one thing they really don't like to do? And majority of people will tell you it's being vulnerable. It's fearful. What is everybody going to think about me? What am I do? What if I post something wrong and it's taken wrong? And by allowing a that same word consistent pattern and that ability to um, not stray, but be able to create yourself. I think that is how we overcame our mistake of spending dollars that were kind of thrown away. I think we're going to stay in the theme of consistency because I'm, I made the same mistake twice, just on different levels. And I want people to understand like consistency, it just doesn't mean same thing over and over. It means every, it means, you know, similar design, creating design that doesn't change, doesn't go too far off. And that's one of the pieces, you know, when, when I was the Kerr's team at Douglas Elliman back in the day, 
um, you know, that's, I, I messed up there. I was, uh, one ad looked like this, the other ad looked like this. You know, this brochure looked like that, the other one looked like that. And no one knew who the heck I was until I figured out I need to entrap things around my logo. So my logo became my centrifugal force. Then we opened up the brokerage and we had a great brand in the community. Like, you know, Kurz, you know who Kurz is in my community. But then we opened up the brokerage and the second mistake was the agents were all doing what I was doing that element, right? This one looks like this, that one looks like that, blah, blah, blah. And then when we were able to implement the system that, 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 that and, and it's great because, you know, James and I had like a really long conversation and, and understanding how we wanted to uh, embrace the brand and the logo and everything, right? And and he knows how I feel about my brand. Like he knows how. Hey. I feel. <laughs> and so I I'm huge about it, and I wanted everybody to really embrace it so that we were all together winning. Because that's the real idea, right? If we're all consistent with the way it looks, the way it's delivered, the way it feels, the way people internalize it then that's the win. So adapting Max allowed me to do what I was able to do with a small team and tell my small team, hey guys, the marketing has to look like this, right? Now we're a bigger brokerage. And so the way we tell them is, hey guys, we have this great platform for you. Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. We already created it for you. Correct. And so now they go in, they use it, and it creates that very strong consistency in design, in output in, in uh, delivery. I mean, just everything you could imagine. Well, what about your Pantone colors? We were varying our different colors because as you know, in, in our case, we're a Pantone, this certain kind of blue, but we weren't a Remax color. We're not a Codwell, Blanker, uh, Codwell Banker blue. It was very specific. And by that blue color, which translated over to our signage, to every single thing we had, that Pantone is known that that's ours. And I think that's really important that- um, Can I ask you a question, Susan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd love to clarify for some of you guys, Vin, Susan, David, and Mike, Rainier, Rob, everyone wants to join in on this. So when you say we're known, let's segment it down. Are you known in your community for buyers and sellers? Are you known with amongst the agent community, both? Because there's different goals depending on who your audience is for marketing, right? So Susan, let's start there. When you say you're known for your Pantone, people might have mean that that's her color code, right? Her certain numbers, her blue is a certain shade of blue, right? That's the certain one for her brand. Do you mean within buyers and sellers in your neighborhood or with potential agents in the market or both? Well, great question. Actually, I'm not in any of that. I like to look at the community, the okay. whole community as a whole in the terms of businesses, in the terms of um, if we were known as a conversation, oh, you're the blue sign. I saw your signs are everywhere. And the reason I hear that from not people that are buyers or sellers, I'm hearing it from people in the community who say, congratulations, we see you. And I rather have some kind of marketing like that where we're known, where then the first thing that pops in their mind is, where's the one that has the signs up everywhere, the blue sign? Go look for us. Um, I do want to express very quickly, we just did a logo change, not the actual, we did a refresh and we kept it right on to who we were and it's brilliant it looks amazing so um by doing that it took us to the next level that we wanted to reach which is a different level of market now more luxury in silicon and i needed to refresh that brand and to do that we entered it into our templates for maxa and we're utilizing it now 100 percent yeah for me it was uh just thinking as a broker owner right for me it was we were known in the in the realtor community. Huh? All the realtors knew who we were. So can I can I uh, can I jump in there too? Because to address your question, Jesse, about the marketing mistakes and to tie in with what uh, what these guys are talking about um, and what David just mentioned, one mistake that we made early on, I think we're still correcting it, is not having a clear marketing strategy, um, which would include marketing budget. You know what your strategy is. Are you looking just for brand awareness and impressions? Are you looking for some sort of way to capture interest in leads? Um, are you looking to actually just throw things out there randomly or have a clear campaign that leads somewhere? So one thing that's really helped us is we start forming actual marketing strategies that led into actual funnels that led into actual results. Um, I think so consistency is definitely part of it in terms of the look, but consistency in terms of the message and where you're leading them is something that, you know, as we got more dialed in on that, our results tripled. 
Nice. Um, so that's something I could say too. You know, don't just randomly market. One know, thing that I used to, plan. one thing just to add on to what Mike said, I used to always tell, like whether I was in an interview or I was doing some consulting, the first thing I'd look at when every agent or broker wants to do all these really innovative things is, do you have a marketing strategy or a plan? Um, and to me, it's as simple. A marketing plan is as simple as knowing what you're doing next month for marketing day to day. And you're creating and preparing for the marketing you're going to do next month, this month. If you can, and if you can get, you know, where it gets really crazy is when you go six months ahead of yourself, 12 months ahead of yourself, where you're preparing marketing campaigns for what will come out on February, on February 21st, January, what you're going to email, what you're going to post on social, what your agents are going to post on social and email, what you're going to send in, in, in mailers and having a plan. So you're, everything you're doing should be for the, for like the following month or the following year of content today so that you're never behind. So and that was a huge can I say this too? Um, you know, I always throw in too, and one thing that, that I learned that hard lesson is I always inspect what you expect, right? So if you're not tracking what your marketing is doing and what's being successful, you can end up running down the same, you know, down the same road that's not bearing fruit. So, you know, being able to track your marketing to see what is happening with it and, you know, for example, which, you know, emails are being opened at a higher rate, which headlines are working, you know, which, uh, which particular social media is getting the, the, or videos are getting the best responses. So, you know, if you're not really tracking that and starting to build and dial in more on that message, you're missing the bullet there too. So I see a lot of people that have good looking marketing. They just don't have much strategy behind it. Right. Great implementation. You know, David is actually one of the few brokers that I've met or worked with that not only focuses on his brokerage's branding, which is Curves, but he also does a really good job building his own personal brand. You know, I just watched your cool video yesterday that you posted, David, on that luxury bank, $35 million property that you're doing um, a walkthrough on. Um, tell us, how, has building your personal brand helped you as you run your brand or run your brokerage and, it, and recruit and things like that? It's been a blessing and a curse, uh, to be really honest with you. I think the, the blessing is that there, there is no realtor event that I walk into that half the room doesn't know me. And mm -hmm. that's simply because I keep putting myself out there. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm so, I stay very uh, consistent with <laughs> uh, putting myself out there at a really high level, whether it's through video and that could be training videos or that could be the walkthrough of this house or, you know, a new series we're doing or it's YouTube, it could be Facebook, it's Instagram, whatever it is. Um, we're very consistent. I'm very consistent with putting myself out there um, because I, I think there's different levels. You know, I've written a couple of books. I enjoy speaking on stage. The more I put myself out there, more opportunity will come, you know, things of that nature. And, and uh, it, it's also been a curse because when we were growing the brokers, there were a lot of agents that felt like, well, Curse Real Estate's just really all about you. Mm. And I had pulled out of production when, when I opened up the company. So it was, it, I had to go out and convince them, hey, look, I'm not competing with you. I'm just putting myself out there so we can make a big name for ourselves so that you can win. I'm not taking any leads. I'm not, I'm not helping buyers or sellers anymore. I just want to grow this brokerage. And, and so after a while, it helped out. Um, and <clears throat> I tested it. You know, I scaled back and putting myself out there to see what would happen. And, and it, again, blessing and curse, I scaled back. And then you're not as recognized because out of sight, out of mind, right? But then at the same time, more agents are like, oh, so tell me about Curves Real Estate. What's up with it? And so then I, I got, actually, I got a very good tip from Mike, Mike and Long. He said, you, you know, social awareness through your agents. And so I, by, by doing that, by having my agents create social awareness and talk about a deal they closed or... Um, you know, how great it was at the Curse Real Estate training the other day or et cetera, et cetera. By doing that, then I was able to pick back up and do a lot of more personal branding and stay again in front of the faces of people without feeling like, you know, is it about David Kurz or is it about Curse Real Estate? I'm confused. I don't know. You know? Did you say it was worth it though? Because again, you're, you do it really well. To build your personal brand. It's worth it. The world, 100%. Because like, so Vin Sochi should build his personal brand? For sure. <laughs> I really believe that I would not have grown this quickly 
um, and done what we've done if I didn't have a personal brand. I'd just be another Joe Schmo opening up a brokerage in Miami, Florida, which by the way has 56,000 agents and over 2,500 brokerages, right? So, and, and so, you know, you know I, I, didn't, I, I didn't want to be a, a, just another, you know, guy doing this. Yeah, but, but, but David, doing as a team, which was pushing myself, pushing myself, pushing myself. Right, but Dave, and I don't know how long this webinar is, James. I just texted you. You can tell me how long how long we're going. I mean, for, for Vin, you say Vin should have his own brand. Doesn't it depend on what your goals are? Because in this day and age, like everybody is their brand. And with social media, it already is. You already all your brand. Just a lot of people's brands suck. Mm -hmm. they, they don't even know they have a brand, but they are their brand. So, but the question is for Vin in his role with a very large company, like, is it truly important for him to have a, a personal brand in the same way that you do? Or, you, I mean, what's I don't, I don't know if in the same way I do, but it, 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 like you said, it's all in line with your goals. Like if, if you, you know, I know some guys that are, have big brokerages like that and all they do is put out constant training videos, right? Like they're, you know, and, and they get in front of a camera and they give, you know, a, a training video once a week. And that, that creates a personal brand. People associate that knowledge with Vin, they, they associate the idea that I can go to Vin and ask him anything. So I need to join this company because if I ever have a hiccup in my career, this guy's going to really help me out. So David, uh, I, I, I want to add to that too, because the question really is, you know, do you need a personal brand as you grow bigger? Uh, I would say this agents, you know, I don't think it's an absolute necessary, but let's put it this way. Agents are always looking for leadership. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you have leadership within your own four walls that they really trust, they're going to follow. If they, if you don't, you're going to possibly lose them to the individual. I know who you're talking about, David, uh, with the training videos every week, you're going to lose people to, to guys like that because people want that leadership and want somewhere they can go. They don't want to feel like they're on an Island by themselves. Let's face it. We're all self-employed individuals in this industry and the buck stops and starts with us, but it's really nice to be able to have somebody to lean on in a leadership role when needed. And I'll just say, <clears throat> jumping in, I mean, we're 850 agents. So <laughs> when you talk about building your brand, I think, you know, we're a company that, you know, we don't sell against our agents, but we still have to create our own brand of, you know, my cousin, Jim D'Amico and myself, people know who we are, you know, and without that, you know, that's why people stay with our companies because, we, you know, we're a big family. I mean, it's 850 agents, but we run a family run business. We're not that corporate type. Our staff is run. From me, you know, me and Jim at the top, we interact with all of our people and that's our brand, you know, so I do think that we're, we're not competing, we're not building a, you know, real estate transaction brand, but we're building our brand to represent Century 21 Northeast. So we don't run into a lot of the struggles with, you know, signage, things like that, because it's already given to us. It's just throwing our brand name on it. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, we still have to get that name out there. And for us, I think we have to work just as hard, if not harder sometimes to overcome that because of the view of your big company. So people have to, you have to work harder to build those relationships, I think. Yeah. Yep. You know, they say that I, we, I've done a ton of research and, uh, on the conversion rates behind a company or a brand that, that says you should buy this or you should do this versus a person. It's a, the person who's an influencer is 300 times more effective at influencing another person than the brand. And why that blew me away. Like, down to why, why do why do companies hire celebrities to promote their products? Right. right. Exactly. So, so Vin, Vin was dying to jump in, but before you move on, James, uh, Tristan and I were actually texting offline the other day about a fantastic book called Messengers, which actually dives into what you're talking about. So maybe we'll talk about that in another webinar. Vin, what did you want to say? Well, I think Vin's Sochi brand's already out there, but like, you, it's the idea is you're recruiting 24 seven. If you're an executive in a company. It starts with your social, your social presence, because if you're a chief executive officer, broker owner, whatever it is, and you don't have an Instagram presence, you don't have a you know Facebook presence, you're not going to attract a millennial audience. You're not going to attract agents to your to your brokerage if they can't make a connection. Because it's all about relationships, it's about who you are, and and you know you can have the best brand, best brokerage out there, but if you're not connecting on a personal level then who are you? And that's what people always want to know. So on a personal brand standpoint, I think it's, it's apparent everybody has that. Mm -hmm. I think people want to feel aligned, you know, right from the very top all the way to the very bottom within the company. They want to feel aligned with the people running it, uh, where the company's going, the mission, the values. I mean, all of that human element plays into it. So your personal brand, I think, really does matter. They, they're going to like and trust the brand more of a person than a company. Yeah, and they, you know, they've, they, there's been surveys across real estate agents 
um, done in the last few years, asking them what are the three reasons why an agent joins a brokerage. And they say, number one, the reason they join a brokerage is the leadership. It is that human, the broker, the manager, whoever it is um, that they feel connected to, they join for that reason. Number two, they're proud of the brand, which I thought was so cool. Um, was like, oh, I love C21 Northeast or I love Realty Group and they want to rep that brand. And then third- That's the coolest it, thing in the world. Right? That is. When somebody joins you and they're like, man, where can I get some swag? You're like, yes, I will yeah. buy it from you. That's <laughs> <laughs> I think what happens though is, you know, when you start out and you become, you kind of get in that leadership role and your, your brand starts to grow, everybody that jumps in and adopts it with you, pretty soon the company and the brand becomes bigger than you. It really does. At some point it becomes bigger than you. And, you know, but you're still an extension of it and the representative of it. So, you know, you got to be mindful of that as a leader, as an influencer or a leader that, you know, you are part of that brand and people might join you because of who you are but that brand is still gonna be vitally important. They're not just gonna stick with a company that sucks, let's be honest. But you know, they, the two go hand in hand, yeah. both the company and, and corporate brand and you as a, as a representative of it. The third I heard was how good is the company or the leadership at helping that agent leverage? That's mm -hmm. what it, that's, that was the third one. Uh, it was like, yeah. how good are you at helping them leverage through technology tools, through having them learn how to hire their first assistant, so how to expand their team, and it, that was the third piece. Um, if you can hit those three really well, I mean, you've got you're gonna dominate your your area. Can you imagine so, trying to convince your five six hundred people on how to create a personal brand and you don't have one. Yeah. Well, how you, James, to touch on what you just said, again, this really goes back to social proof and proof of concept again. So, speaking of marketing, if you're helping your agents leverage, I mean, really they're joining you so you can help them grow their business. If their business goes backwards, they don't want to be with you, right? So what you need to do is think about how are you providing that proof of concept? Are you highlighting your agents that are succeeding? Are you highlighting your successes? Do they even know the success of the other agent in the other room? So, I mean, it goes back again. You can't just market to the general public or just in recruiting. You've really got to market to the people that you already have. And if you fail to do that, you know, then, uh, then I think you're also going to fail to retain. And that's a big, that's a big point because, you know, one of the biggest things is when you lose an agent, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the size we are, we're going to lose agents. I mean, it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. But when you talk to them, and I think the biggest frustration for us is when you talk to them and they complain about something they already have and they just didn't know, you know, and I think that's one of the biggest frustrations. And that's where it comes back to, like we said at the beginning, you know, this is something we're going to take and continue to market every single month and put in front of them because when they know it's there, they buy into it. You know, I think one of our biggest examples of that in the past was um, Dot Loop. You know, that was something we did trainings, you know, tw two a day for, you know, three months to get it implemented and then keep doing it every single month. But the usage is high and people love it. But there's other technology we've implemented and then you kind of start pushing it because you think it's out there. But you got to remember you're recruiting. And, yeah. you know, one of the things that we, you know, kind of live by is that, you know, you're not always recruiting outside agents but you always need to be re-recruiting your agents every single day every you day. know so just like you talk to an outside agent you need to talk to your agents about hey how awesome is that marketing oh you don't use it sit down let me show you how to get in that's what we do and i think that's one of the things for work that works for us but it's happened where you sit down and you say man i you know relationship we lose that relationship because you're focusing on other things and this agent doesn't feel the love and they notice it so it's a tough balance, but you have to have that personal relationship, but you always have to have this keyword again, consistency and branding this stuff to your agents as well as the public. So Rob, we've, uh, we've helped automate a lot of that too, because, you know, as you know, somebody might go, man, I really love this Maxa product, but it looks great, but I don't know how to get in there. Don't remember my login, you know, and they, they feel a pain point, right? Yeah. So instead of re-educating one agent at a time over and over again, one by one, We've automated a lot of the training, just the simple stuff like the onboarding and how to log in, the simple things like, here's how you create a open house flyer. Yeah. So we're, we're training these things in video content and context. We're hosting them, we're storing them and pushing them out. And I can't tell you, we've even dedicated one, one employee to do nothing but one-on-ones on our marketing platforms all day long. That's all she does is get people into the CRMs, help them use it, get them into the marketing suite, get them into Dot Loop or our transaction coordinator. Uh, uh, management software, just making sure people know what to do with stuff 
Yeah. And I can't tell you what that's done for our retention because you really have to market the products you're pushing. Right. And we've done a we've done a video training library that's been huge for us. So anytime, you know, they reach out to, you know, we have this centralized help desk that, you know, we can instantly respond. So our response times are really quick, goes to the dedicated person, but we always follow up with, you know, the answer, but also links to our video library that yep. we've created. It's not just an outside general one. So you're seeing, you're actually seeing our technology, Us you know, created the way we have. So I agree. And yep. the videos, you know, for our website and CRM platform, it's made the biggest, you know, difference. And what we do with the videos as well, just to throw out there, is not only do we train them on how to use it, we teach them on things. So for our website platform, we also we also do videos on how to drive traffic to it and how to yeah. do a buyer's consultation with the website. And those get a lot of traction as well. So it ties in with the training. And now you're not paying a full-time trainer to come in and do the stuff that really you can just watch a video on and then just do a quick, you know, Q&A. So we, we do the same thing. We, uh, we, if they want to sign up for a one-on-one -on, -one on how to use something, we send them the video first uh, yeah. that we've created just like you, you know, same thing. Uh, it's us teaching them how to use it. Yep. If they still need the one-on-one -on -one after, we'll do it. But we just took a half an hour appointment down to about five minutes. Then. You're absolutely right. Well, yeah. We, you guys are talking about four-hour work week concepts now. <laughs> <laughs> you are, no. It's, oh, it's, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. If, if, from the book, The Four-Hour Work Week, where, he, where no. he talks about if you're going to answer a question one time, record the answer so you're duplicating yourself, so you're never mm -hmm. answering the same thing over and over and over. That's yep. just it. Yeah. The one thing I really want to leave everyone with, our attendees and, and you guys as a panelist, and, you know, the, the most powerful thing about marketing and how it leads up to the top three things that agents look for for recruiting and how it leads up to the consistency um, that you guys are all having to, uh, are confronted with or challenged with is marketing to me is the superpower for leverage. Mm -hmm. Marketing leverages your brand, it leverages your leadership style, it, le it leverages how much you care, it leverages retention, it's all of those things and you can do it by, when you care about marketing, like how Vin went from the VP of marketing to the COO, um, and you and you drive it down your culture and across all the things you do, and then you find tools like Max that can actually systemize it, streamline it, and support and empower the brokerage to, to continue to market. I think that's that to me was the take the takeaway. And hearing everything you guys are saying is leverage yourself, your brand, your leadership, everything with you by using marketing to promote the consistency and everything else you guys are doing culturally. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Love it. You guys, thanks so much for being on Love this call. I'm, I'm sitting here taking notes, which is great. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> that was so, uh, it was, it was really great to have you guys. Um, we're, this is live. We'll share, we'll send the link to you guys. Tristan wanted me to say thank you as well. He's going to put all of us on a group text because he wants to pick your brain some more on some things. So look for, I'll, I'll do a group text for now. And then thank you so much for being on this. And again, happy Monday. It's the last Monday of the decade. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you.